Kolomer Krav Amar Makra, Kol Habasar Chatsir, Vachol Chasto Ketzitz Hasade, Yavesh Chatsir Navel Tzitz Kiruach Adonai Nashvabo. A voice says, Cry out. But I ask, What shall I cry? All flesh is like grass. All of its beauty is like the flower of the field. The grass withers and the flower fades when a wind from God blows upon it. Surely, therefore, people are like grass. The grass withers, the flower fades, but the word of God endures forever. Le David Mizmor, la Donai Haaretz Umloa Tevel Veyoshveva, ki hu al yamim yisada, vi al nahoret yichonineha, mi ya'ale bahar Adonai, umiyakum bimkom kadsho, Niki chapayim uvar levav asher lo nasa lashav nafshi velo nishba lemirma. The earth is the Lord's with all of its fullness. The world is the Lord's with all of its inhabitants. Who may ascend the mountain of the Lord? Who may stand in the holy place? She who has clean hands and a pure heart. She will receive a blessing from the Lord and a just reward from the God of Deliverance. My first year in Cleveland with the synagogue, I had been teaching a sisterhood class for a few weeks, and Miriam came up and said we should do some stretching in between. <laughs> I said, stretching? I was new. It was, a full, it was a full morning of classes, she said, and we should get up between classes and stretch. So Miriam began to lead the class in exercises. Come on, ladies, up. That's exactly what she'd say in the three minutes between the earlier class and my own, in her elegant workout clothes. They were workout clothes. They were very elegant workout clothes. Her logic was, why should we waste time when we get getting that blood circulating and that heart pumping? And that was your mom. That was your grandmother. That was your great-grandmother. Eternally young, eternally active, always thinking, always vibrant. Life was not to be wasted. A day was not to be wasted. An hour, a few minutes, and not to go to waste. Life was to be lived. A philosophy she believed in for herself and for all of you. She encouraged you in every experience you wanted to have. Every adventure. It was not, how can you do that? It was, why wouldn't you do that? It was not why. It was, why not? I know it says 24 hours in a day, but that must have been for someone else. Miriam must have had 25 hours in a day. Not only because she sometimes ran late, but because she just packed so much into a day. Nothing phased her. Nothing deterred her. What's the term? Renaissance man? She was a Renaissance lady. She did it all. She never tired of learning, of stretching herself, of growing, of being the eternal student, whether it was sisterhood class, or when uh, Fridays became a day of free learning at local colleges for senior citizens, and Miriam took the deluxe model, took four or five classes. Or when she went to the museums, you better block out a full day. Miriam didn't want to miss anything. Or when she went uh, with you, Gerda Israel, right? She took Hebrew Opan when she was 70. She made sure she was always about learning. She made sure all of you were exposed to learning of many kinds, art, Dance, piano, Hebrew school, of course. She was selfless. She was available to you. She was dedicated to you. And she was devoted to you. She saw the individuality in each of you. At the same time, she and your dad also expected you to take care of each other as brothers and sisters. She wanted you to be well-rounded. She wanted you to be, she wanted you to be not only great kids, but great adults. And she was the world's greatest optimist. With education and hard work, you could achieve everything in your life. She truly believed that, and she believed most of all in you. What was that uh, Maya Angelou quote that as important as anything you say, what's most important is how you make others feel? She always made you feel that you could be whatever you wanted to be, and she would support and encourage that. 
You all carry around a certain confidence that makes you more effective in this world, I believe because of your upbringing. I know that we speculate if your mom had been born 30 years later, she might have been able to pursue other careers, but I can't say she was born at the wrong time because she helped to make you who you were and who you are. You were raised in a household where gender didn't restrict you or stereotype you, where diversity and inclusion was being practiced way before the world spoke about it. They were her ethic. They were her core values. They were the expectations in the house. Miriam was a giver, a giver for her family. When I, I thought this early on after talking to her a few times the first couple of years I was here, seven of you, I thought you guys should be in a TV show, really. What was that show, Eight is Enough? This should be called Seven is Plenty. That would have been enough. More than that, I know she was a caregiver for her own mother. She interrupted her own dancing career in order to come home and be a caregiver, later became a caregiver for her mother-in-law. And uh, she was older than some of her, many of her siblings. She looked out for them as well. She was close to her parents and her siblings. She grew up in the Depression, and life was difficult. Family had to move around. And Miriam learned the importance of close family and the need to work hard. She saw families in real abject poverty, and it stayed with her. She met your dad while a nurse. The story goes in the surgery room. A light almost fell on her, and he saved her. They married, always trusted each other. She took care of all things, family and budget. Your dad was very well respected in his field, but also busy out of the house. But they agreed on the core values. She enriched some of his own life with knowledge and culture. And together, they created the home you all grew up in. I know that your parents consistently lived below what they could have afforded because they were investing in your future. Seven kids going to go to college, and I mean investing. They really felt they were investing in your direction. They not only opened the door to all of you, but I know for special friends and neighbors, they thought of your parents as their parents, as mom and dad figures. You know, there was a custom in ancient Jerusalem that you would drape a cloth over a doorway to indicate that this home is open to strangers as they went by, that you're invited. Your parents, had they lived in Jerusalem, there would have been lots of cloth over their doorway because their door is always open to other people. Her life was always open to others. And uh, I know some of you visited with her when she taught dance class in East Cleveland and you were able to immerse yourself in some of her world where she was extending herself for others. And of course, she was a regular on Shabbat at services she loved them. She loved being Jewish. Her identity as a Jew mattered a great deal to her. Her involvement with sisterhood was ever-present. I know that each of you grandchildren and great-grandchildren knew how much she loved you, how proud of her, how proud of you she was, and her confidence in you. Yet you also knew she had her own life. She was the cool grandmother. She was teaching. She was traveling. I know that the loss of your dad, the loss of your brother, these were very difficult moments for her, as for all of you. She moved forward not because she was fully comforted or could ever be, but because Miriam believed in putting one foot in front of the other and continuing to move forward on the journey. As a child of the Depression, you mentioned she never threw anything away. She wanted to save everything. She may have saved many physical items above and beyond, but I think she also saved all of her memories, all of her experiences. They all remained part of her, everything she had lived through. She never threw those away either. Everything that she'd experienced became part of who she was as she moved forward. No memory ever lost childhood or adulthood. They all served to shape her and who she was and who she became. And who she became was this very gracious, very graceful liver and lover of life, Articulate, smart, knowledgeable, tireless, loving, proud, and optimistic person. A wonderful person, wonderful lady. She believed in the philosophy, you're alive, you'll be fine. And even when life occasionally gave her, as all of us, a hard knock, she never really abandoned that philosophy. You're alive and you'll be fine. 
She certainly never ran away from a chance to live. She lived with a good name, and she died with a good name. And I want to call on uh, Jeff. Jeffrey, you're going to. Well, my mom had one heck of a life. She really did. Um, our mom was truly a remarkable human being. They don't come any better than Miriam Glazer. She was one truly amazing person. I can truly say that she was the finest, kindest person that I have known. And to describe my mom is really easy for me because everything I'm going to say is true and deep within my heart. She was a matriarch of our family, raising and loving her seven children while caring for our father's mother, Libby, who was incapacitated by a stroke for nearly 10 years. Literally, my mom cleaned her and fed her on a daily basis. My mom was selfless and always put everyone else's needs before her own. Our mom was kind, loving, compassionate, empathetic, sympathetic, optimistic, creative, curious, incredibly intelligent, adventurous, loyal, athletic, honest, grateful, and had boundless energy. She was open-minded, she had a great sense of humor, and she was a champion who always encouraged others. Let me talk specifically about some of those traits. Kind and compassionate. She would take ants out of the house because she valued life and wanted the ants to live. I don't believe anyone ever saw her mom kill anything. If there was a bee, she would say, it'll go away. Don't hurt it. Truly remarkable. Being a champion. Growing up, we lived next door to a large Catholic family, the Carvers, who had nine children. Their mother wasn't really present in their children's lives. Um, and one of her sons, Terry Carver, became very close to my mom. Uh, actually, he was going to fly here. Uh, he was in Kansas City and got stranded at the airport. But he told me, he said, just tell everybody that there will never, he said, Miriam Glazer, there will never be anyone ever like her. She was like a mother I never had. I admired and loved your mother. Just a joy to be around, and she was the, my biggest champion. When my own mother and father did not believe in me, she gave me encouragement and told me I could achieve anything I put my mind to. Well, that was our mom. Truly remarkable. I had a friend who was extremely poor and down and out who lived with a single mom who was on welfare, and my mom and dad allowed him to stay in our house for uh, three to four months. This was kindness, empathy, compassion wrapped in one. Truly remarkable. Optimistic, that was our mom. I believe she got that from her mother, Clara. You see, my mom was a product, the product of the Depression, and had a, which had a lasting impact on her life. She grew up in Pittsburgh with four siblings and her parents, Max and Clara. Her father was a dairy chemist and owned a dairy and lost everything in the Depression. Times were very hard, and she was one of the poorest kids in school, uh, often wearing hand-me-downs from her sister, Cressa. She never complained and always believed that life would, be, would get better. My grandmother, Clara, was totally blind, and no one ever heard Clara complain. My mother saw that, blind, that blindness didn't deter her own mother, and she believed that things will work out and to be grateful for what you have rather than complaining about what you do not have. Very intelligent. My father was a brilliant physician who was president of the Pediatric Radiology Society of North America, but my mom was every bit as smart. My mom went to Canton McKinley High School and was the valedictorian of her class. Our mom's education was disrupted by World War II and by raising her family. She ended up going back to college in her 60s and getting her college degree. Truly remarkable. Athletic and creative, our mom actually tried out for the Rockettes on Broadway in New York City as a young woman. Unfortunately, my grandmother had a heart attack and mom came back to Canton to help take care of her much younger siblings. In later years, our mom became president of the, Cleveland, of the Modern Dance Association at the, age of, and at the age of 70, performed with her friends at a dance concert. There are pictures of her mom standing on her head at the age of 70. Can you believe that? 
That's remarkable. Our mother was remarkable in many other ways. I always remember her as a beautiful dresser who put together matching outfits. This is a very sad time for all of us. Miriam's passing means the end of an era, the passing of a generation of our family. But we must celebrate and teach about her life always. And may our eternal memory of Miriam's life, her unconditional love, her selflessness, and her character serve as a guidance and example for, to the living. Thank you. I'm Ginger. I'm child number five, the youngest daughter. And in my family, I think I happen to be the one that kind of cared a lot about the memorabilia, not that other people didn't care, but I'd be the one to go to look through the boxes and find things, keep, keep them, save them, etc. And so to me, mom was always mom. But as I started to read and look at all the memorabilia, I just realized how amazing she was. My mother did a lot of things um, later in life, and, a, and it, which I'll briefly talk about, but a, a lot of people were very interested in that. People wrote newspaper articles about my mother. My mom was in the magazine, magazines. And so what I would like to do right now is to talk about maybe some of the things that attributes that Jeff talked about, maybe some of the things that are, the grandchildren may talk about. But what I want to try and do is to talk about those events as mom saw them. So what I'm going to be doing is I'm going to be quoting my mother exactly, so you know exactly how she felt about these various things. The first thing is that mom has a very positive attitude. Everyone says she is just, uh, you know, very cheery, upright, and that's absolutely true. My mom happened to be, this was in the Cleveland Magazine, August 1992, the Cleveland Magazine decided that they wanted to focus on some of the senior citizens. So they decided to create a magazine called Prime. And the very first inaugural issue of that magazine, my mother was on the cover. And she was, it was called Renaissance Woman. So this quote comes from that particular article. And she says, I don't scare easily, she explains, and I approach everything with a positive attitude. Having a positive attitude going in gets me a lot further than feeling that it's going to be a struggle all the way. I look at everything as a challenge and opportunity. Other people might talk about how my mom always looks on the bright side of things, and when you got lemons, make lemonade. So there was a situation when she, my mom went to Israel, Spain, and Cyprus. It was some time ago. And apparently she arrived in the midst of the worst winter the Middle East had experienced in 125 years. Excursions and day trips were canceled. She was lost in a blinding blizzard at the foot of the Acropolis, and she was stranded in the Athens airport for 13 hours because of snow. While others might have complained, worried, or moped, my mom saw the opportunity to explore on her own. When she was lost, she flagged down two Greeks on a motorcycle who whizzed her back to a tour group on the back of their bike. By the way, I think mom was well into her 60s when this happened, okay? While stranded in the airport, she made friends with the person she ended up traveling with in Cyprus. After all, mom said, sounding like the down-to-earth psycho psychology major she is, how we cope with the situation helps us define the situation. But a lot of people are going to be talking or may have talked about how my mom is a lifelong learner. It doesn't matter, not just Judaism, not just dance. She was interested in everything. And just to give you an idea that it wasn't just one little thing she was interested in, my mom was interested in everything. So... My, my, uh, my daughter, Michelle, Michelle Lawler Higgins, interviewed my mother. And one of the questions she asked was, tell me about your trips to the elder hostels. And this is what mom said. 
I have been to many wonderful places. I have been to the Bermudas, where I studied marine life at the Biological Institute. In France, I studied the museums and art of southern France. I went to Rockaway Beach, California, to learn about the Italian, Jewish, and Irish immigration to the United States. I went on the great train track in Australia, where I learned about the history and geography of Australia. I toured eastern Australia and the outbacks. In Los Angeles, I went to an elder hostel that focused on Jewish studies. I have tried to turn my travels into not only a fun adventure, but a learning experience as well. I think this gives you a really good idea of my mom. Also a lifelong learner, my mom became a bat mitzvah at the age of 80 at Park Synagogue. This is what she had to say about that experience. We now had a Hebrew literate household except for myself. I always had the leisure of relying upon my husband Norman to find the place in the service. After his death, I relied on my children and grandchildren. I realized that I should not rely upon others to help me follow religious services, but should undertake that responsibility myself. I am proud that now I can attend services with more knowledge and understanding. I know this is a lifelong study which I expect to pursue. I want to apologize because I have lost my thing about dance, my quote about dance, but dance was an integral part of my mother. She was involved in so many different dance activities, the friendships she just cherished. I want to tell you my mother exercised into her 90s. I actually have a pay stub that my mom was teaching the elderly at the age of 88. Exercise, very, very important to her and her dance. Now I just want to just talk a little bit about a college degree. Mom was not afraid to challenge herself. And uh, something we were very proud of about her. And the college degree, my mother got her college degree at the age of 68. She earned the bachelor's degree magna cum laude in psychology and gerontology. She also gained membership by invitation only into Tsai Chi, Chai Chi, the National Honor Society in Psychology, and received a CSU scholarship award. This was a really big deal for my mom. This is what she had to say about that experience. I have great satisfaction. It's been a goal of mine for so long. It wasn't always easy. It takes some perseverance, but it's definitely worth it. All my children are educated. I felt I needed to be educated too. Just because you're 60 doesn't mean your life has, has to end. People are living longer and still have so much to give, she said. And now I just want to tell you, just a little, like you think, okay, she got a college degree, you know, that's nice, that's wonderful, it was age 68. But to do these things, it really requires a lot. So here's what she had to say about the first class she took. Her first class, computerized electronic music. It was nearly a disaster or so, she thought. The class required her to use a tape recorder, splice tapes, use a computer, learn a new, learn a new computer language. Analyze music, none of which she had prior experience doing. She said I was frightened, so I asked the professor to let me take the course pass-fail. I did the work. In fact, I overstudied so I wouldn't fail. At the end of the class, the professor tried to talk me out of a pass-fail grade because I would have gotten a good grade. So we were all just very, very proud of my mother. Mom had some advice for us, I guess particularly the older, older people, and here's what she said. She said, now, I want to encourage people my age to share their experiences and do things with their life. There is so much potential left, we haven't even scratched the surface as to what we can do and contribute. It may take us longer, but we have so much to give in the way of skills, abilities, and life experiences. Mom, we love you so very much. You are so kind, intelligent, loving, compassionate, beautiful in and out. 
You have been a role model to just so many people. You have made this world a better place. We will all miss you greatly. You've left an amazing legacy, and your words and actions will ever more inspire us. Now, I'm not done. I would like to do two other little things. I don't think it'll take long. Number one, I want to, on behalf of my family, thank our incredible caregivers to my mother. They worked with my mother for five years. They loved her. She loved them. I, I know it sounds like a cliche, but it's absolutely true. They went above and beyond in, in caring for her. There's two circumstances I just want to talk about so ever so briefly. COVID. COVID came in March 2020. Wiggins, where mom was living, shut down. They wouldn't let anybody in, anybody except for medical personnel. If it weren't for these wonderful caring caregivers, my mother wouldn't have seen another human being, basically, for two months. Even the meals they left the, were left outside the door. No one, would, no one came, came inside. So I view these wonderful caregivers as being my mother's lifeline to humanity during the beginning part of COVID. And the AIDS did this without understanding the risks that they were taking on themselves coming into that environment in the beginning of COVID. A family eternally grateful. The other thing in these last few months, um, they provided 24-7 care. My mother wanted that. And we were so glad that we knew my mother wanted the care. We, it provided such relief to us, her family, that we knew that my mom had companionship and she would never be alone. So I want to thank you with all my heart and on behalf of my family. So I would like to thank Rebecca Calhoun, who was the team leader for five years, Angie Coleman, Joyce Green, Michelle Hibbett, Deborah James, and Tamika Shepard. The last thing I want to do is I want to read a very brief poem that has provided me with comfort during times like this. It was written by Robert E. Browning. I am standing on the seashore. A ship appears and spreads her white sails to the morning breeze and starts for the ocean. She is an object of beauty and I stand watching her till at last she fades away on the horizon, and someone at my side quietly says, she is gone. Gone where? Gone from my vision, that is all. She is just as large as when I saw her last, and just as able to bear her load of living freight to its destinations. The diminished size and the total loss of sight is in me, not in her. And just at the moment when someone at my side says she is gone, there are others who are watching her coming, and other voices take up a joyful shout, there she comes. My grandma Mir was awesome. And when I say awesome, I mean she was awe-inspiring. You no doubt have heard or will hear about her lifetime of adventure, accomplishments, and commitment to family. All of these were awe-inspiring, not only because of the things she did, but how she did them. She led her life with the utmost compassion and enthusiasm. Mir embodied the fact that life is a blessing. She intuitively understood there is a difference between existing and living and she pursued a cultured, interesting life with vigor. One of my favorite memories was when my wife and I took Grandma Mir to a Dance Cleveland show in 2017. As some of you may know, she was a founding member of CMDA in 1956 and danced into her 70s. As soon as we walked into the theater lobby, people from Dance Cleveland recognized her and flocked over to see this living legend. We were immediately given upgraded VIP seats and backstage passes where Grandma sipped champagne with the dancers after the show, told stories, and took photos. She was style and grace all the way. While her last few years were challenging, they were just a small part of her 98-year story. The mirror I remember was a vibrant, sophisticated person who loved to travel and had a lifelong passion to learn and enjoy new experiences. Her curiosity and knowledge about the world were among her best attributes. She also had a great sense of humor, always appreciating a good joke. 
She made everything more fun simply by her being there. Even with Graham's involvement in numerous activities, she always made it to Shabbat dinners, a weekly tradition for us growing up. Her love of Judaism and Jewish traditions has been and will continue to be central to our family. Over time, it became too hard for Grandma to host. So in keeping with Jewish customs, her monthly turn to host evolved into bringing Chinese food to Greer and Carrie's house. Usually on time, but not always. Those Fridays were some of my best childhood memories, made even more special by Grandma's constant presence. She would want us to continue those traditions. This past July, Grandma was certain she would not be around within a week. In true Grandma Mir fashion, she wasn't quite on time, and thankfully, she was with us for another five months. Those five months were not wasted. They were full of family visits, meaningful conversations, and even a celebration of her 98th birthday. By the time she passed, there was nothing left unsaid. And to give a quick example of the kind of person she was, two days before she died, I was holding her hand. Instead of me rubbing her hand, she was rubbing my hand. So she was, I mean, on her deathbed, comforting. Grandma Mira was a blessing to seven children, 15 grandchildren, and 16 great-grandchildren, and counting. She also leaves behind six caregivers who cared for her like family. Thank you. Each of us had our own special relationship with Mir and loved her very much. We will remember and celebrate her life as, a, as an example to live up to and pass on. How lucky we were to have Miriam Glazer as our matriarch. My grandma Mir was nothing short of extraordinary. She lit up the room with her infectious laugh, beautiful blue eyes, and her color-coordinated outfits, which matched perfectly with her lipstick. She taught me that dreams have no age limits. As you all know, Mir earned her bachelor's degree in psychology at age 68 and was bat mitzvahed at 80. We even shared the same bat mitzvah tutor. Grandma had a zest, that's true. Grandma had a zest for life that I've never seen before which is why she probably drove 70 miles per hour down Chagrin Boulevard, <laughs> perhaps earning more speeding tickets than anyone I've ever met. But that was Grandma, always running from one place to the next. Speaking of cops, when Grandma was in her 80s, she was pulled over for speeding, and when the officer peeked in her car, he saw none other than a samurai sword in her back seat. <laughs> I can only imagine the look on, my, on the officer's face, but Grandma simply explained that the sword in the back seat was, of course, for her Tai Chi, obviously. Um, I don't say this lightly when I tell you that my grandma was just the kindest, most loving, and selfless person I've ever met. Whenever you were in her presence, you just felt so loved, but I'm sure that's no surprise to everyone sitting here today. She taught me the importance of family and traditions at a very young age. I do not take for granted how fortunate I was to have grown up in Cleveland during my childhood and sharing so many wonderful memories with Mir. Grandma, I miss your uh, beautiful smile, your love, and even your wettest kisses. <laughs> you are a trailblazer, the most beautiful dancer, the eternal optimist, and truly the best matriarch of our family. This is the last one. <laughs> I just thought that it's fitting today that the sun is shining when we're used to cloudy skies in Cleveland. Um, the sun reminded me of Grandma, who was our bright star. I'm having a really hard time knowing exactly what to say because I feel like there are just not enough words that are worthy of summarizing my Grandma Mir. She was one of a kind. She was kind, warm, sweet, generous, creative, compassionate, adventurous, courageous, curious, intelligent, and loving. I could go on with a hundred more adjectives. I don't ever remember a time when she was mad or yelled, and I don't remember a time when she said a bad thing about anybody. I just have thousands of happy memories of the shining star of our family, <laughs> who was always patient, always calm, and always had a positive outlook to everything. Grandma Mir had some magical abilities. 
She had the ability to make anyone feel welcomed, loved, and cared for. When she talked with you, she gave you her full attention, and she looked you in the eyes and smiled and asked you deep questions, and you felt like you were so important to her. She had the ability to live life with more optimism than should be possible, even in her times of great pain and sadness. She had the ability of displaying such kindness, like singing to my other grandma while stroking her hair to calm her down and helping her do exercises in her last months. She had the ability to look like she had just stepped out of a fashion magazine, matching from her shoes to her reading glasses. And she always had the ability to look like she was 30 minutes early when she was actually an hour late. Growing up, I always knew how special my grandmother was. I remember feeling lucky that this beautiful person was mine. I'm so lucky to have been able to live most of my life with her in Cleveland and have known her for my 38 years. 38 years of Shabbats, Jewish holidays, birthdays, going out to dinners, movies and shows, of sleepovers and vacations and massages, of walks and laughter and talks, of answering so many questions I had about her life and about our family of helping me get through heartbreaks and supporting me through life's rough patches. 38 years of memories with this gem amongst us. Family was so important to Grandma Mir, and you could see the joy in her face when we were together. She warmly welcomed the members joining our family and treated them like her own. She even thought my dad was funny. <laughs> she was our biggest cheerleader and fan. She beamed with pride when she was an audience member at our school functions, sports events, bar and bat mitzvahs, weddings, graduations, award ceremonies, and other recognitions. She would travel throughout the U.S. and other countries to visit her kids and grandkids and to be there for our special milestones. And we were all so proud that she was our mom and grandma. And I want to remember how she was the last few years, frail and quietly sitting in her room, I want to remember her as the bright light that she was, full of personality and life. I want to remember her facial expressions when she acted in our home plays. I want to remember her that she would sleep over on Friday night so she could make us French toast on Saturday mornings. She had a little secret that she added orange juice to the egg batter to make it sweeter. When she got hurt, she would place her hands on the area and tell us to close our eyes and picture a white light going to where it hurt. She would dress us up and take us to the ballet downtown. She snuck a $10 bill under my pillow when the Truth Fairy forgot to come when I lost my first tooth. And she would volunteer to come into schools to discuss growing up in the Great Depression and who would pose for a picture for a high school photography class. I want to remember my grandma who, said, who never said no to experiences, who rode on horses at a dude ranch in Canada and crawled through an archaeological dig in Israel in her 70s, who snorkeled in the Australian Reef in a lot and who was always up for everything. I want to remember my grandma as the most generous person I've ever met, with her love, her time, and her heart. She would stay with us so our parents could go on trips. She took many of her grandkids on some special trips. When it was her turn to host Shabbat, she would either get Chinese food or make prime rib, knowing that that was our favorite foods. She would constantly buy us presents and fill up her shelves in her basement, and she would travel. <clears throat> to her kids and grandkids so that she could be there with them. I also want to remember the silly things that made Grandma Mir Grandma Mir. Like when she gave my brother a bag full of condiments as a Hanukkah gift because he liked to eat. <laughs> when she said she knew a shortcut and we begged her not to go that way because her shortcuts were always long cuts, taking twice as long. Or the time when she decided to take a sleeping pill before boarding an international flight while chugging her. <sighs> Tonic water that she swore helped with her cramps, and she got kicked off because they thought she was drunk. <laughs> when she tried sushi for the first time and ate a scoop of wasabi, thinking it was fish. When she tried to be nice and fed some cats scraps, and we were in Israel, and then like 50 cats started coming around to filling our driveway every day. I'm hoping that you remember these silly stories of her too, and we can share them together the next few days. If you loved Grandma Mir, honor her by living life the way she did. Be positive and optimistic, even when things are hard. Say yes to more things than you say no. Be adventurous and try new experiences. Talk to people with kindness and compassion and let them feel seen and heard and supported. Love your religion and your community. Continue to pursue your passions no matter how old you get. Always be curious. Never think that it's too late to do the things that you want to do and that are important to you. Tell people how much you love them and how much they mean to you. Be good in this world. Grandma, I'll try to live my life this way for you.
I will forever cherish the time we had together and help tell my kids stories of their great grandma Mir. I will forever love and miss you. Let's rise for the memorial prayer. Hail mole rachamim, shochen bam romim, hametze menucha nechona, tachat kanfei hashkina, bemalot kedoshim, utehorim, anabala rachamim hasti reha, beseter kanafecha leolamim, utsror bitsrechem et nishmata, adonai hu nachalata, Betanuach b'shalom ha'mishkava, v'nomar amen. May we remember all of the worthy and the righteous deeds that she performed while in the land of the living. May her soul be bound up in the bonds of eternal life. May she rest in peace. And we all say amen. Let's be seated. We want to offer our condolences to Gail. Gwen, Greer, Ginger, Jeffrey, and Greg, and to the rest of the family, children and grandchildren and great-grandchildren. Uh, we want to note that the uh, Shiva visitation will be at the uh, home of Greer and Carrie in Solon, uh, 36680 Blackberry Circle, 36680 Blackberry Circle in Solon, beginning today at 5 o'clock. Today is 5 to 8. Tomorrow it's 5 to 8. Friday, it's 1 to 3. We'll have a Shiva minion this evening. It'll start between 5.30 and 6 o'clock. We'll have our first uh, Shiva minion. That'll be this evening between 5.30 and 6 o'clock out in the location in Solon. I just want you to know that uh, they have a certain format for the cards, but there are so many names of uh, relatives that we had to put this on a second page. We've, we've broken the model for this family because too many loved ones of this lady because we couldn't fit them all on one card. We added a supplemental sheet. Uh, let's uh, stay in our seats for another moment. Uh, the pallbearers should now come forward. We'll arrange the processional to the burial spot.